Good morning. Happy Feral Monday. Trying this out. Ooh, I like this wand. This is for my little flyaways here. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. I always have one of these next to me, but this is a different brand. I like it. I think I like it a lot. Let's see how it dries. When I'm using a product like this, I don't want it to get crunchy because I want to be able just to brush it out later. So let me see how it dries. Now my little antennas sometimes fall down, especially when I get into the groove. So I'm gonna clip them back. These are from Revolve. I love these so much. Plus they have little hearts on them and I'm ready for Valentine's Day. So with the smoky eye, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pot concealer. But listen, this is only going to go from this high point here, see this, to my brow bone. And the reason I'm not gonna use eye base is because I'm gonna use something different for the rest of my eye. So I don't even need to worry about eye base, but I do want this to be very full coverage, very even. I don't wanna see my veins for this look. Um, I don't wanna see my freckles. I want it to be very full glam. So I'm going to take concealer, but I'm not gonna put this concealer where I'm gonna have any kind of friction. See, I'm not gonna have any friction from here to here. So that's why I'm just gonna use concealer to conceal today. Not using it as a base, just using it as concealer. Update, no crunchiness, holding beautifully. I feel like it's a little bit stronger hold than the INH one, which I like for me because I've got a lot of hair and a lot of little So let's just see how it stays the rest of the tutorial, but so far I like it. All right, this, this is going to be great. So this is a liquid shadow, most of you know it. This is from About Face and the shade is Capulets. And we're gonna go a little bit warmer with the smoky eye. Not always, but if you're just starting out with the smoky eye, going warmer can be a good idea. And the reason why is because normally with most skin tones, these warmer eyeshadow tones, we can trust the process. If we go in with cool tones right now and we're not used to uh, seeing this much heavy black eyeshadow on our eyes, it's going to be a little jarring, maybe even disheartening. So that's why I wanted to teach it with a warm base. I can teach it with a cooler base, but let's get our warm base under control first. So I'm using the tip of an E29, which is a fluffy brush, just to transition it a little bit into our concealer that we have here. Do you hear that snoring? That's actually Doug today. Douglas is my doggy. Okay, just keep tra tapping, trans. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of powder foundation, which most of us have one, and it's just in my shade. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna press it in between these two colors. It's gonna set the concealer and give us even more of a smooth blend. It's just so easy. All right, listen up. We're gonna use our Carla Cosmetics Black Base today. And to make sure that I don't put too much black base, because there is such a thing, listen, it can get out of control real quick. What I'm gonna do is, do you see my natural fold right there? Do you see that? I'm not gonna apply this base over that. I'm gonna completely relax my eye, and I'm just gonna follow that. I'm only applying the base to my natural fold. Gina snoring. Okay, that's good. See, even that's okay. That's fine. That's where we want it to go to. So now we need a dense brush. The C31 is perfect for these bases. And we're going to take that to where it, it went. And what I mean where it went, where that little crease went. But the reason I applied it only to my natural lid um, is the because... If I had taken it all the way up there, the product all the way up there, that would be too much black base and we lose control. And that's what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to keep everything under control because smoky eyes, the only reason that they are intimidating is it's because how quickly you can lose control. So brushes, the shape of the brush is so important. It's so, so, so important. Um, and the size of the brush, which we're gonna get to in just a second, but I'm just gonna continue to smooth this out. We have a little tippity tap. This is one of my favorite palettes of all time. I absolutely love it. I have went to town on it. I've, I've, 
I've done some damage. <laughs> but I want to start with this color. And notice that I grabbed it in the center of a brush. And also notice how tiny this brush is. So now that we're moving on to our powder shadows, we're going to want a very small brush. Now, what I don't want you to worry about is that right there. We're going to put an eyeshadow on top of that tacky base in a little while. Right now, we're focusing completely on the socket. So I'm pushing and transitioning that darker shade that I just showed you right on top of the black base. This is our very first transition. We're going to want it to look like this. Again, this is all completely normal with a tacky base. That's not what a tacky base is. It's not a liquid eyeshadow. It's something to grab what we're going to use later. But we're not there yet. So everybody hold their horses. All right, just keep tapping to train. Am I the goblin that got too excited and forgot to tag what palette I'm using? I apologize. Sometimes that happens to me. I get so excited that I forget. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cosmos palette. And as you can see, it's been one of my favorites. And we're using this. Okay, we're using the color. Can't even get it open. This one. Okay, that's going to go on our lid and it's going to change everything. This color excites me. I've been wanting to use it again. It's so pretty with the smoky eye, but sorry for forgetting. I, I get excited. So we're still with the dark shadows. We're going to cop over into the next shade. And the key to a smoky eye is really just a small brush, which then lends itself to very even soft transition. So we're going to take that one and that one's going to go above that other shade. And then having that very first transition, the liquid shadow that we used as a base, having that for all of this to transition to also plays a really beautiful part in how even and blended this is going to be. Just keep tapping. I know it's monotonous, but we're about to be able to switch to a larger brush. But when we're using the darker colors, this is a good tip. Anything darker than this, we're going to switch to a small brush, okay? Small brush, small brush, small brush. You know what, let me grab another palette and show you. Let's get some more warmth going here. We're just gonna hop over into this shade, switch to a larger brush, because now we're, we're not gonna lose control of a color like this. We really want this one to get in here and really warm up that top part. Look at that, ooh, that is a smooth, smoky, perfectly blended eye. Excuse me, the animals have heard their little animal bowls downstairs being filled with food. They would like to go participate in breakfast. Be right back. So I'm still deciding if I really love this Carla Cosmetics base. And the reason why is because it will eventually dry down. And I like it to stay tacky, but then also I like that it dries down a little because sometimes black face can continue to creep. So I'm still deciding how I like it as an artist, not as a product. It doesn't mean it's a bad product. It's just an artistic preference, but I do want to smooth that out. Now it's nice and tacky. It's not going to crease. Don't think that it's going to crease once it's set. We all know that. Get in there. But I just don't know. Let's grab this shade Galaxy. Honestly, sometimes I go to bed thinking about this shade. Grab that on the small brush. And then we're just going to go ahead and set. This way till you see this with back camera. It's gorgeous. So now we have some micellar water here on our E29. Make sure it's nice and even. And I just want it on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to soften this. So I did a harsh cleanup with the C30, which is this brush. And what I mean by harsh cleanup is I went under here and got all of that fallout. And fallout's so normal. I don't know when we started thinking that it wasn't. It's not a big deal. It's all about the technique. Anytime you pack a shadow, it's absolutely going to have fallout. But we're going to take that and we're going to soften up these edges around here with the micellar water. And I'm going to take it in here too. And I'm just going to keep tapping until it fades it a little bit more. I'm going to wipe that off. And just keep tapping. So I'm doing my waterline top and bottom. Look at that. This is such a good liner. And then I just want to do a little bit on my lash line. Look at 
Nice. I think this is out of stock, and I think that we are to blame. But I know that they'll be restocking soon. Now we have Libre Lashes, style number four. So, with the smoke hit, look at how light my eyes look. Oof, just wait till we get it underneath here, and I have tips for that too. But a smoky eye can really disguise your extra large lashes. So if you have a pair of lashes that you haven't worn because they're a little intimidating, now's the time. Now something that kind of steers us away from a smoky eye is when we get to this point, some of us might not have even made it to this point, but that's where I was telling you about the small brushes. But if we get to this point and then we look at our skin and it brings out the worst in our skin, it just, it does. And I know a lot of you are thinking, Rose, your skin's wonderful, yes. But if some of us have dark circles, it is going to enhance them. It's going to pull that out. It's pulling out more purple and blue under my eyes than I normally have if I had just done a very, uh, even if it's a glam look, but something with warmer, neutral tones. Using black, I'm telling y'all, you just have to see it through. Let's keep going. All right. I did a little bit of color correcting on this side. Look at that difference already. So I use this one from EXA, probably still one of my favorite color correctors of all time. It's just a perfect consistency and I did two dots. And we wanna focus this color corrector only where we have the issue. So I'm not gonna bring that color corrector down any further than right there. Also, why am I using peach? It's because my under eye is pulling a little blue. So we just wanna use a very small brush. We're using a C31 for this. This one's perfect for detail correcting work. And concealer's still gonna go on top, but we need this to completely dry down. I want my Cover FX foundation. I love this foundation so much, but you really gotta shake it. And we're talking about foundations and concealers that have a lot of skincare in them. That is also important to shake because that skincare completely normal it just it's just going to kind of come apart it's just what happens it's not a bad thing um so we want to give it a really nice shake so i'm gonna put some on the back of my hand i don't know anymore the ruckus that ruckus around this house and then i apply it to my jawline first some of y'all might know why i can explain why Ooh, that match so once we get to the center, we don't want as much product there. We can build as we need. I know some of us need more coverage in the center, but it's always a good idea to start on the perimeter of the face. So the outer part of the face generally can hold more product. Once we get towards the inner part of the eyebrows, the nose, the upper lip, even the chin, that's where the product has a harder time holding on. So we wanna use smaller amounts there and build up. And when I say smaller amounts, I don't want you to think that we're not gonna have coverage there. We're gonna work slower there, more gradual. We're not just gonna go, ooh, ton of foundation right in the middle, work out. It's always gonna be best to work from the outside in. And I even recommend switching to a fluffier brush to go around the brows. That's a, that's a little, a little area that says, no, I want to wake up and I want to choose cakiness. So this more diffused application is a really good idea in these areas. So I'm just going to take that, tap it around my brow. It's going to be really, really smooth. And something else that can happen that we don't realize is I, I still do my brows first. I do. But then sometimes I'll forget to take off any excess product around that brow before I get my foundation on. So make sure that you do that. You just take a little bit of micellar water. And I think I taught that the other day. And you just go right around it. We're not, you don't even have to carve. Don't think of it as carving. Just think of it as getting that product off any excess. Because excess product where we're going to place foundation, especially something sticky like a brow gel, is going to cause cakiness. Ooh, we are smooth today. Okay. So I wanted a little bit more coverage today. I'm, I'm gonna use my Hourglass Concealer. So I used this years ago, but I don't remember enjoying it. But when I say years, I'm talking about when it would have came out. But I think I didn't like it with what I was using at the time. Ooh, I just almost showed y'all a brush. Oof. So I don't think I was liking what I was using at the time with it. And I think even at the time when I would have been using this Hourglass Concealer, I was using a setting. 
which if you're enjoying your setting spray, then you love it and I want you to keep using it because we don't stop using things because I don't like them. If they work, we use them. But for me, this concealer did not pair nicely with a setting spray and I thought it was the concealer, but I, I think I'm really enjoying this again. I like the coverage and I also see less is more. <laughs> Now we're gonna use this wet concealer to our advantage. We're gonna just do a little bit. A little bit of this goes a long way. We don't need to take this all the way across. That's gonna be enough. That's how pigmented these are. We need our little tiny baby brush here, E27. And that wet concealer is just gonna, look at that, glide, done, boom, luscious, blended. Gene is snoring. But then there's another tip. Don't sleep on this, just don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up this shade shade that we already have in our crease, our transition. All right, pick it up. This is really cool. And then I'm going to use the smallest amount. Beep. See that? Just a, just a whisper. Just one more whisper. Beep. You can barely even see it on the brush. Barely. You see it glisten there. Okay. We are going to take that and it's automatically going to turn it into a liquid shadow and we're not going to have any fallout. And we're going to have the most even, wonderful, fantastic, delicious blend. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so this next major tip, all I'm doing is evening out my concealer because it's not set. You want to use a setting powder, a powder closer to your skin tone. Going too light is just going to cast shadows. It's another reason we do not enjoy smoky eyes. When we use something closer to our skin tone, it adds the balance that smoky eyes need. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Once I figured that out and stopped using my brightest under eye, I started to really, now if you wanna brighten your under eye, brighten it after. Brighten it up after, just give it a little after. But it still needs that balance underneath. Now remember, my under eye is the only thing that's set. How pretty is this blush color? It's not too pink. I think it's so pretty. I think it'll be really pretty with this look. I'm gonna do my blush a little higher. So I want a lot of lift today. So if I wanted a little bit more of a rosy look and add just a little bit more lift to my apples, I would apply it more towards the front here. But I want all my blush to be focused this way. So I'm going to, so normally I wouldn't tell y'all to use the applicator this way, um, but I, I've used this and I know that I'm gonna have really nice dry, the ruckus. Really, I'm gonna have a really nice dry time um, I know that this isn't going to be crazy pigmented. It's going to blend out really. See, good. So I know about this formula, but most liquid blushes, it's best to apply them to the back of your hand first. But this one's really nice. Now we're going to do bronzer. But look at this. I'm going to take my bronzer. We're just going to apply it like we normally do. And I did opt for one that's a little bit more warmer, but this is the one I've been loving so much. Place it there. And I haven't powdered the rest of my face yet. I'm setting with this because this one acts like the most blurring face powder anyways. But then I'm going to take some, see how this is angled? I'm going to take it on the tip, right? And I'm just going to press it right here into the temple, connecting it into the brow, into the shadow. And it just adds the prettiest, beautiful lift to the smoky eye. Ooh, I love it. So we're going to be using this from Kiko Milano. This dries so quick and lasts for a thousand years. Not really, but it'll last. I think they updated it to 18 hour wear. I need to double check that, but I know it was 12 hour wear. So, but listen, with this formula, this side is going to dry very quickly. So I'm actually going to do my lip liner first. But how cool is this end? Look at that. It's like this little spongy thing and you can get really nice precise blended or blend I should say okay get ready get ready for this <laughs> by the way the lip liners are completely waterproof they're not going anywhere so now we're gonna go in with this shade and I got a link for y'all oh so pretty we're gonna make sure it's applied really nice and thin just like any liquid lip. And then once we get it blended out where we want it, we're not gonna rub our lips together. We're not gonna do anything. We're gonna sit here and wait for this to dry. 
My lips look so plump. So by the way, this is not gonna come off, neither one. Not the lip liner, none of it. None of it's coming off. But then you top it with this, and you just get extra juicy, comfortable. Go look, okay, just so you know, it's not coming off. And I know a lot of us don't enjoy nudes, this nudie nude but they have other beautiful colors and I'm gonna show them to y'all. I'll do, I'll start using these. And I can't exactly say who, there you go, who this is a dupe for, but it's a dupe for a brand that's been around for a very long time. 100% um, a dupe. And then if you wanted to just do a matte smoky eye, you would have just used black the exact way that I use the sparkly black. But I mean, this sparkly black just makes my makeup heart sing. Also, isn't it interesting how this is one of the number one sellers from Kiko in Europe, but it's just not something that we gravitate towards here in the US. I think we look at this as a very outdated formula, even though it's absolutely not. This is going to last, not gonna transfer, um, but it is just, it's just interesting. I, I, it's another thing that really fascinates me about the makeup industry is how each region all over the world, we enjoy different things. Definitely saving this to my highlights. I hope that you learned something. A lot of tips here. There's a lot. And I still don't want you to feel overwhelmed with the smoky eye. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually incredibly easy. It's just, just like that. <laughs> All right, I love y'all so much. There's something else I wanna to film today. I'm not gonna tell y'all what I'm filming. I'm just gonna show you this. Some of you already know what's happening. Some of you will see. I have an idea. I love y'all so much. I love you with all of my heart. In case nobody has told you today, I love you. Definitely posting tonight, so I'll see you there in the comments.